The revelations of systemic brutality within the defence establishment have shocked Australians and prompted survivors to come forward with stories they've kept hidden, sometimes for decades. Since last month, when 7.30 exposed the full extent of decades of violence, we've heard from many former army personnel whose lives have been devastated by their experience. Some of them were recruits at the Army's HMAS Lewin Barracks in Fremantle. It was described in a recent report as an incubator of violence where boys as young as 15 and 16 endured horrific abuse. Mike Sexton has some of their stories. I can see the faces now uh, and I remember names of people and uh, they were quite controlling and quite vicious. Every kid that went through Lewin came out of that place a completely different child. The Navy's junior recruits are average Australian boys. They've joined Lewin either straight from school or after a short period in civilian employment. They've shown that they are boys who are able to live in harmony with their parents, their teachers and other boys of their own age. This PR film from 1968 shows the upside of life in the Navy but also inadvertently gives a hint about the power hierarchy that saw boys subjected to violence. The school is split into divisions, and senior sailors and officers are assigned to look after individual groups to provide the family discipline and advice growing boys need. The first six months, I look back now, and it really was, it was bloody hell. Stephen Cole was 15 when he left Sydney for HMAS Lewin. Coming from a military family, he expected harsh discipline, but not to be the victim of random attacks, mostly dished out by gangs of older recruits. Like being stripped naked in showers um, and having your testicles scrubbed with a bloody boot brush and boot polish. And that happened to me on several occasions. I cried myself to sleep, as you do, you're only just a kid. The junior recruits quickly sensed the brutality was, if not endorsed, then sanctioned by officers and sailors. Our block, we had, uh, what, 150-odd people in there. <sighs> I'd say at least 50% were victimised. At least 50%. There was sexual violence as well. One of the senior people there that was doing the abusing, he used to walk around... It's hard to extract. He called it the pacifier. It was just a, a lump of polished wood, about, I don't know, a metre long. And he would, you know, walk it like, you know, over his shoulder and he would physically hit people with it. But in the mornings when he was getting people out of bed, he used to ram it under the, the sheets of the, your bed into your anal area. He seemed to enjoy it. It was... When he used to walk around with it, he had a smile on his face. That, that's what was even more terrifying, because you could see that he was enjoying what he was doing. 44 years after joining up, Graham Pilly still has the recruiting psychological report that recommends him as an asset for the Navy. Friendly kid, well accepted by superiors and peers, and am not counting on any difficulty here. However, he says an incident within weeks of arriving at HMAS Lewin left him brutalised and untrusting for the rest of his life. It began when the 15-year-old was propositioned by a supervising sailor, something he violently refused. Took off and I ran and ran and ran and ran down to the football oval and all I had on was my pyjama pants. It wasn't long before they found me and kicked the living shit out of me and raped me took the civilian clothes off me and left me naked on the oval. Yep. Graham Pilly was too ashamed and fearful to report the nightmare, but within months of being attacked, in line with the culture of the base, he rose up the pecking order and sought revenge on new recruits below. When you got the top shit, you took, you were a product of the situation and you did all the brutal things back to everybody else. And everyone knew what was going on and nobody did a thing about it. There was one examination of the culture at HMAS Lewin. In 1971, after a 15-year-old recruit went public about being bashed, an inquiry was held, but it's never been fully released and it remains today in the National Archives with the majority of it blacked out. The Navy 
or the Department of Veteran Affairs or the, or the Australian Defence Force. They don't want the lid to come off this. It's a blight. It's a ter ter terrible blight on Australia and how children were treated. Very different young men to the untrained boys who joined the Navy a few months before. Ready to join the ships of the fleet, these young men display the pride, assurance and maturity they've gained as junior recruits of the Royal Australian Navy. For the boy sailors, the experiences of Lewin were not left behind at the passing out parade. Many believed the brutality followed them to sea. Mark served more than 20 years in the Navy, including on board the warship HMAS Swan, where in 1992 he saw behaviour reminiscent of his time at Lewin, only this time the targets were female. They were being harassed by naval officers. And it wasn't just one officer, it was a gang of officers. It was gang warfare on there. And to a point where these two poor female officers that were being victimised, they sought shelter in the chief petty officer's mess. They could not go back into the wardroom. They, they were terrified. You could see it in their eyes. Like so many graduates of Lewin, Stephen Cole had a distinguished naval career. During his 40 years in uniform, he worked as an investigator, where he formed the belief that violence begets violence. I've had to investigate abuse. A lot of it. Sexual abuse, physical abuse, drug-affected anger, anger behaviour, aggressive behaviour. I've had to do all of that in my career as an investigator. And you can see where the origins start sometimes. HMAS Lewin still haunts some of its former residents. Graham Pilly has a fridge full of tablets that keep him alive. 7.30 has spoken to more than a dozen men with shocking stories of their time at Lewin, but a majority didn't want to speak publicly. I feel wronged. I feel that I feel that the Navy, and if not the Navy, the Department of Veteran Affairs or the Australian Defence Force or whoever you want to call them, I feel they have a lot to answer for. And I'm sure I'm not the only child that was ruined. Yes, my life's been ruined by the Navy. Mark was decorated for his naval service, but believes the abuse he suffered has cost him two marriages. I tend to lose the plot, you know, like, um, as a, like a, an angry reaction. Generally, there's a flashback. I just think this happened to me at Lewin, you know, something similar happened to me at Lewin. It just makes me more angry. I try very hard to try and control it. At Fremantle, there's a memorial to the junior recruit, signifying the base is now part of naval history. What remains to be seen is if, given the findings of the DLA Piper report, what happened at HMAS Lewin will remain in the past. I don't go to reunions. Um, I just, it just brings up too many, and I'd feel a bit of a hypocrite because some of the people at reunions are some of the people that I don't really want to remember. Just to clarify, the introduction to that story referred to the Army, HMAS Lewin, is of course a Navy facility.